There isn't such a verse in the Quran. The nearest is Walakat Sarrafna Walakat Katabna Fit Daburi Mimba the Zikri and Nal Arda Yari Suhay Badi Salihun said that we had given to Dawood in the Sabur this message that to my righteous servant, my righteous servants will inherit the earth. That is what the Quran says. But this quotation, the meek shall inherit the earth, you find that in Matthew chapter 5 verse 5, where Jesus says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Now you see that in the Bible that our doctor has given me, there are cross references and it tells you that this quotation is from Psalms chapter 37 verse 11. That quotation is from Psalms, Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But when you look for it, you find it in, in Psalms chapter 37, verse 11. Word for word. But Jesus didn't give the credit to David. He said, look, I got this from the Psalms. Muhammad is made to say that this is written, he's actually quoting, this is written, he's giving due credit in the Zabur, it is there. And you find that this is what the Quran says. Jesus Christ is actually plagiarizing. If he didn't mention it, if he didn't give credit, he is plagiarizing. He is stealing from somebody else's writing, not Muhammad. So, still, still, you see, look, what is to copy? What is to crib? You must show to us, I have the Arabic Bible here, in case he hasn't got it, and got the Arabic Quran here. What he must show here, that in the Arabic Bible, Jesus says, I am the father of one. It's a look in the Quran, Muhammad says, I am the father of one. In the Bible, Jesus says, that he that has seen me has seen the father. And you see, Muhammad also says, for example, that he that has seen me has seen the father. This is what is called copy. This is what is called cribbing. This is what is called plagiarism. So far, in the 75 long minutes, unbearably long minutes, he has not yet given us a single phrase of word copy that Muhammad has copied from his 75 percent in the Bible. The Arabic Bible is here, sir, making easy for you, and the Arabic Quran is also here, making easy for you. Thank you, Mr. Dida. There appears to have been a little confusion. Dr. Anis Sharosh was of the opinion that he would be accorded additional time for his rebuttal. Uh, he appears to have been laboring under the mistaken belief that the time allocated and in fact utilized by him initially, the 90 minutes, did not include the 15 minutes for the rebuttal. In view of this, uh, both uh, the sides have agreed that he will be now allocated 15 minutes for his rebuttal. After which, please, ladies and gentlemen, please, let me complete. After which, Mr. Ahmad Didat will be given another 15 minutes to continue his rebuttal. Please bear in mind that this meeting has to be con conducted fairly, and that means you're participating in a fair manner as well. Please let both speakers express their views and opinions. You could raise objections after they have spoken, not while they are speaking. Dr. Anis Sharosh for 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I am sorry to say that I understood I was coming for a rebuttal. I didn't realize I've taken the time. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Verse 133, direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Romans 15, 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope.
there are no less than 300 prophecies that were fulfilled in the time and lifetime of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Quran we are told and argue not with the people of the scripture unless it be in a way that is better. We are also told and if thou Muhammad art in doubt concerning that which we reveal unto thee then ask or inquire if you please those who read the scripture that was before thee. Then we read in Surah Al-Ma'idah from Pikthal, interestingly enough, it's verse 44. In Ali's, it's 47. And this is what it says. It was as who revealed the law to Moses. Pardon me, it was we who revealed the law to Moses. Therein was guidance and light. By its standard have been judged the Jews by the prophet who loved, who loved Allah, Allah's will, by the rabbis and the doctors of the law, for to them was entrusted the protection of Allah's book. It's called Allah's book. Now, Mr. Didat, as to the questions concerning these matters of beggars and the lives of people, let me first mention to you that I'm amazed that a man of your caliber does not realize that in Matthew we have the lineage of Jesus from the side of Joseph, his adopted father. And you know, as well as I do, 66 fathers were not the real fathers. It was very simple. There was grave importance in those days and today placed on one's ability to prove his lineage because the inheritance depended on that. Therefore, Jesus was connected to the royal line of David from the tribe of Judah through Joseph. Dr. Luke followed another line from Mary because they were not brother and sister. And as you will know, King Hussein of Jordan traces his lineage to the Hashemites and therefore to that of Muhammad himself because of the importance involved. Accuracy, Mr. Dirac, must be the idea. As for the other matters that you mentioned, such as Samson. <laughs> First of all, ladies and gentlemen, no one has the right to make fun of the word of God because he is playing with fire. Secondly, I have noticed ever since I met Mr. Didat that he has a problem with the biblical miracles. Why? It appears to me that his Allah is too small for such demonstrations of the Almighty. Surely one can say Allahu Akbar all day and all night. But I would rather say Allahu Huwal Akbar. God is the greatest. And therefore he is capable of providing his anointed servants with incredible powers to do his bidding. Listen to this. Mas'udi in Muradi, volume 4, page 376, tells us that at the battle of Safin, Ali, with his own hand, no weapon, no stick, no jawbone of an ass, had killed 525 men in one day. Now I wonder if this story is more believable than Samson killing 1,000 men with a large jawbone of a donkey. Samson even killed more people. Samson even killed more people without a weapon in his hand. If you know the Bible, he simply prayed, then pushed the pillars of the heathen's temple apart by his powerful arms, causing the roof to crumble over the thousands who were gathered there. He killed more without a weapon than with one. As to the foxes, Mr. Didat, apparently you haven't studied about foxes. Do you know that their favorite food is lamb and chicken? Could not Samson have placed the fox's favorite food in a fenced area so as to lure them into it? A common saying in most languages where foxes live states, as sly as a fox. Why? Because, my dear friends, when captured, a fox plays dead till he is left alone. Then he takes off. Samson could have tied their tails while they were playing dead then with a rope tied the torch between them. What a hilarious sight it must have been to see those creatures 
running throughout the fields with a flaming torch tied to their tails and setting fire to his enemy's corn. After all, Samson, my friends, was a practical joker, like I'm sure some of you, with a good sense of humor and very clever. Now, I'd like to ask you, please, the Quran states God inspired David to write the Zabur. Let me ask you a question. Do you know that there are 150 Psalms which God inspired? 50 are anonymous. We do not know who wrote them, humanly speaking. 12 by Asaph, 10 by the sons of Korah, 2 by Solomon, 1 by Moses, and the balance of the 150 by David. Therefore, the Quran is not correct in claiming David wrote the Zabur. We also must ask you, what about the Injil? You say it was given to Jesus only. Galatians 3, 7 to 9 declares, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations by faith, preaching the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Did you get that? Saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. God warns, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. Hosea 4.6 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for all Muslims is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a real zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from heaven. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for God and for good works. Ladies and gentlemen, these are not my words. These are from Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, from Romans 10, 1 through 10 and 17, and from Titus 2, 11 to 14. How much time do I have? About three minutes. Yes. All right. Old Testament was concluded 1,000 years before the Quran. The New Testament was concluded by over 500 years before the Quran. Therefore, authenticity stands firmly with the Holy Bible, not the Quran, from a scientific and archaeological viewpoint. Therefore, whenever the Quran does not agree with the Holy Bible, one must conclude, scientifically speaking, that the Quran is inaccurate and wrong and not the Bible. I will urge you, I will urge you to study the Bible and know where the Quran came from instead of getting emotional. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. There are a few announcements before I call uh, Mr. Didat to present his rebuttal. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a sequel to this debate or symposium at this venue tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. There was a newspaper report which expressed negative sentiments about Dr. Anis Sharosh,
having to come all the way from America to engage in the symposium or the 